Hello everyone, and welcome back to a new episode of Prismata. We'll just jump into the queue here and see who we can get. Speaking of, who's online right now? Temron's in a game, Red Rhyme's in a game, Elliot is online but not in a game. Boy, there's a lot of scary people you could run into in the queue right now. I'd rather not think about that. Uh, M. Sklar versus Meowth, sure. Kind of just Grimbotch plus nothing mirror going on here? I favor the guy who has some Tarsiers, I guess? No, this guy has blue, that's the difference. Yeah, having blue is more important than having some Tarsiers to go with your botches. Yeah, holding back Grimbotch's early feels bad. Shadow Row. Oy. There's like, yeah, exactly, Tia, huh? Tia plus Mobile Animus. I feel like with Vivids and Shredders, you can get through okay, maybe? Because, like, the Tia player doesn't really have access to, to Vivids. But I think Tia's still good, right? You build a couple Tarsiers and then Viv uh, Tia them, and, like, in the meantime, how exactly have they gotten ahead? We obviously can't, like, do any vivid nonsense this early. We're too weak to Tia that way. I don't like this game at all. <laughs> I would much rather be player two and just, like, kind of have a credible, easy Tia threat line. Um... I don't even know what to do on turn two here. I think you have to be pretty reactive here. Um, I don't think you want a third NG to try and go for Zatron. It's just like too big a commitment. With Vivid Drone, you can use two engineers to just buy one drone more cheaply. Um, if you commit to a third engineer, you're kind of committing to buying at least Vivid plus drone every turn, which is a big investment. Um, so I think I just want to like keep blue in available but probably try to get some green first. Because, like, Zaytron is good. Uh, Zaytron, I feel like, would help a lot, and so would Shredder against some sort of Tia line. But my opponent just gets to, like, do everything, right? <sighs> Blick. Like, I think I need a Conduit. It's just like two really important green units that you need to have available. And I don't want to, I don't know what to do about it. I mean I guess I could do this. So that I have like shredder available if my opponent threatens a Tia, and otherwise I can just like build a splitter. Okay, they want to build a couple of Tarsiers first, which seems reasonable, but can I not just do something kind of like this? Or Maybe build more green so I can get the uh, the Zatron. I won't be threatening Tia very soon because of all these vivids. I think this is okay. So they threaten a Tia next turn. It would be nice to like have a Shredder lying around for if that happens. Um, but if I build the Shredder, they can just like not Tia and exploit my Shredder pretty effortlessly with like Rhino, Gauss Cannon, Tarsier or something. Actually, they can't build all of that. 
double rhino, I guess, plus a, a vivid. It's not amazing, but it's gets to exploit the shredder, so probably worth. I have to float blue if I do this next turn? Is there some way I cannot? I would need to have 17 bucks, which means building like just a, vivid, a single vivid this turn. Yeah, then I can build Zatron Wall or something. That's cool, I guess. They just got me like completely on the back foot uh, with this Tia threat, and it makes me sad. I wonder if maybe I could have built a mobile Animus to threaten my own Tia here, because they're quite vulnerable, aren't they? And, like, by not threatening it myself, I'm giving my opponent too much room, I think. But I only have five, <laughs> four drones now, so <laughs> I've vivided too much. I can't ever really threaten it anytime soon anyway. But I think we've sort of gotten past the danger zone of like where Tia immediately would be killer. It's just that my opponent has like six attack and I have two, <laughs> which is a different kind of problem. I guess I, I could choose to absorb on wall next turn. Well, hang on. I'll just hold this back. The attacks aren't doing anything, right? More than a vivid, what I really just need is an engineer. No. So I wanted to like NG NG onto wall so that Zatron can continue healing, ideally. Maybe I should just attack? What happens if I attack next turn for nine? Which is what happens if I click the Zatron. They can just build... They're building Zatron Wall next turn, aren't they? Nine is just a little bit awkward for that. They'll have to actually use their Zatron to defend. They can't, like, absorb onto walls. Whereas if I attack for any number less than nine, they don't have that option. Or rather, they don't have to do that. getting a shredder? It might be about shredder time, I guess. They'll have seven, and next turn I don't want to absorb on Zatron, so that's fine. Actually, I kind of do... You know, let's just... I can't click the Zatron now, I guess. Um... I guess I could do this. Yeah, sure. Keep him under pressure. We 
are over-defended by almost the Zatron, but not quite, huh? And then this coming turn, we can build... Why did I think I needed this force field? Because they could have clicked the shredder. Okay. We can build a shredder here instead of having to build... Um... Uh, a wall. I guess they did this so they could still Tia next turn. That's why they held a drone instead of force fielding. They want a Tia here. I mean, I'm scared. Yeah. I have this Shredder, however. And you'll be on extremely few drones. This might work out okay for me, I'm not sure. These drones are just like extra health. Um, basically, this is like you buy drones to convert them into health with uh, to convert green into health. Ooh, yeah, they get to let the Zatron heal this way. That makes it a lot harder for me to break through anytime soon, doesn't it? forgot about that. Shouldn't this be Splitter? So, uh, Shredder? Why would you not? Okay, so that's all the defense I can make, huh? That's pretty sad. And we're just attacking for two, which doesn't do anything. Well, in that case, I don't need the wall, since I'm sacking a splitter anyway. I can build a shredder. Time to go breach proof. Ooh. Do I have any good death visits? Uh, any, any good Zatron emotes? No. Well, it is time to go breach proof, though. Yeah, my six damage is not going to get through here. Like, I just, I played so defensively in the early game, like, getting this blue and Zatron up, like, while my opponent just sort of relaxed and built Tarsiers until they were able to kill me. Um, and I'm, I don't know what I'm supposed to do in these kinds of games, because if I hadn't done this, they have some pretty good early Tia lines that, like, should work pretty well. Zatron clicks were kind of questionable, I guess. Like, it's trading 7 health on my Zatron for, like, 5 health on their Zatron, basically. Um, so clearly not a great trade uh, in the most basic sense. Um, I was hoping, at the time, to make it more difficult for them to, like, suddenly Tia, or to just build Tarsiers. Um, 
But I didn't really succeed in actually doing that, and I was sort of just throwing my health away. I don't know, I needed to somehow get red here, and I just don't know how I'm supposed to do it, because if I ever try, I just get, like, brutally teared. And so I guess maybe... Like, maybe this turn three is just the, the first mistake, where I, I cut a drone to get out some more tech, but it's not really the tech that you want. Right, or maybe the second conduit was a mistake and I should have gotten two drones. I was thinking about, like, I probably just got out the Zatron too soon. As we saw, because I had to keep clicking it, because my opponent just wasn't attacking enough. So, if I was going to get all of this green, I feel like I needed to also actually threaten Tia. Because then I might have, my opponent is actually quite vulnerable to Tia, right? He was able to take this very, like low health approach because I was so far away from threatening any Tia, right? Um, I don't know. So they say, like, uh, player two is somewhat more advantaged in, well, in... The random set tends to have... Mm, let's try again. There are certain builds which are easy and strong for player one in general and uh, for player two. And the random set units dictate which of those builds are actually good. Um, or perhaps offer different kinds of openings if you have a unit like a Vivid Drone. There's openings you just like can't make without it um and so like if there's a random unit that like is good for green often it's just more convenient for player two to get green right and so we say that like that set sort of favors player two um they say that or at least some of the like now at, at most levels of prismata play until you get to be quite highly ranked um, usually the difference in player skill is a, the primary determination, right? Like, I'm sure I could beat, you know, a 1500 player in this set or whatever, something like that, uh, even as player one. Um, but, but a, a, as you get higher, like, there are sometimes, like, both, both players are just going to play quite well, and... Whoever, ha whoever can find an opening that works for them, that's efficient, uh, will, will tend to be doing well. And sometimes that's a lot easier for one player than the other. So they say that, like, player two often has easier builds. Not necessarily stronger builds, but, like, it's very, very easy to find a green line or a blue line, or especially a green-blue line, or, like, some early red for player two. It's just all very natural. The player one lines, you have to like choose to either overcut or undercut. Well, undercut or uh, delay, I guess, the sort of natural feeling player two approaches. And either of those can actually be good, but they're harder to execute. So I don't know. I've, I feel like in this set, it's a lot harder to be player one. I don't know if player one, like, as you can see, I did stuff that like clearly looks bad, but I, I don't know what else I was supposed to do. It just felt like if I didn't do something like this, I was going to get creamed. But of course, if I do do this, I'm going to get cream. So you have to, like, find a more nuanced approach. I don't really know what it is. Um, and, and so I don't want to say that that set was player two favored, but it was much easier for player two to figure out a working line. Um, I'm sure, like, M. Sven or something, looking at that, would have found a better line for player one than I did. Um, and could explain to me why my line wasn't going to work ever, which is that, like, you kind of have to build some attackers eventually, or else the other guy wins. <laughs> that was sort of the problem I ran into. Like, I built some attackers, but they're really bad. Um, the best attacker in that set was Tarsier and Tia. But I don't know. Can you think... I, I try not to think of Tia as an attacker, because... When trying to identify what the best attacker is, it's usually something you're going to buy several times, right? Tia is more of like a tempo play that you buy once to enact a large change on 
the game environment. Um, whereas attackers are just like, here's what you spend your money on to deal damage to the opponent. Alright, we got String, another strong player. Base plus five again. Reasonably good absorb and soak, so Sentinel, oh, sorry, uh, Venge Cannon should not be working. And Ebb is going to work well for anything high econ ish as well, or anything blue in particular. Um, so. The attacker in this set looks like Tarsiers, right? We could maybe get like. It would be kind of nice to have around 16 drones. Probably a bit more, but 16 would be a way to spend all of our attack and tech, our gold and tech comfortably on like Xeno, Tarsier, Sentinel. And maybe like don't start the Sentinels right away, but um, start them eventually. Uh, build, build a few rounds of Tarsiers before you start in on the Sentinels. And we want a large amount of tech uh, for given how much money we're going to be spending every turn, just because Xeno is so cheap, spends tech so cheaply. Um, I think we want a third engineer first into Ebb, and then a Conduit and another Blast Forge. Something like that. I'm not sure exactly when you sneak in the Animus. Maybe you get it... when you get your first Xeno Guardian or something. Here seems fine. Alright, so I guess we're getting like one more ebb or maybe a grid. A grid is kind of interesting, but probably not that great. Um So what I'm thinking is we can get one grid, maybe. I don't know. So I kind of want like all this tech, right? So that I can start building double Tarsier Xeno. I don't need the second conduit yet, I guess, because I, I'm not going to be building a Sentinel quite yet. Um, my opponent's just building a Xeno next turn, so I, I'm not really that excited about building a grid for it. I just want more drones instead. And then I can build two Tarsiers, a Xeno, and some drones or something. Maybe, I guess I need a conduit. Something like this. these guys all up on top. Whoa! That is ebbs. So many ebbs. Threatening six already, which is pretty cool. I have 26 income, my opponent has 28. That's fine with me, I guess. I don't 
know about this bench. I guess you just like have some extra green lying around, right? You don't really need a green sink, um, but you did. You don't need a persistent green sink, but you do need a way to sink the green you have right now. I guess I can just build a wall instead of a Xeno there. Um, I could turn this Tarsier into a Rhino if I, like, cut an NG or clicked an Ebb or something. Apply a little more pressure. It doesn't seem that great to me, though. This, this is a pretty slow game with all these Ebbs. And, uh, sorry, uh, Xenos and Sentinels. And so I think we want at least one more. Tarsier. This splitter could be a uh, grid, although I think that that's also a bit too defensive. We have NGs coming in from the Sentinel and from buying them. I can just build a wall next turn instead. Hang on. What was that? Did he absorb incorrectly and lose too many NGs? Did I miscount? I think he must have gotten it right, but it, it looked like he... No, we attacked for six. Yeah, so he did the right thing. All right, he wants to click his Venges, I guess. That's the only excuse I can see for this extra conduit. Or maybe it's just for force fields while you're doing all this stuff. Nine damage. He gets to keep alive five health, right? If we held back a sentinel, he gets to keep six, which is awkward for him. It means he, like, can't keep the Xeno if he wants full Absorb. Now, this denies us a, an Engineer next turn, but I think that that's okay to get this little exploit. Am I correct here? He just, like, three, four, yeah. This is a slight exploit. I think I'll try it. So we we got one extra damage out of our Sentinel if we're willing to wait a while. Wow, more Venges. I thought surely you would be clicking the Venge you have. Do we have any weird exploit here? No, he has to lose everything this way. And now I have a green sink and some more attack. I got to spend my, my extra green and we're switching to Rhino mode. I feel like Venges and Tarsiers is like the wrong combination. If you're going Venges, it must be Rhino time, right? Is my thinking. Oh, did I not need this wall because of, uh, the fact that I was killing one of his attack? Maybe. But it made it... Mm. I don't know. It just feels like he... these two Venges I don't like at all. The first one was fine. The, the second one and the extra green I don't understand. against an opponent with Sentinels and Xenos. Uh, 
Uh, a second wall defends this. I don't need any more engineers because these sentinels will all be defending next turn. So I think I'll just not click the ebb and like I could I could look at it from this perspective and say would I really build a drone? No. A gauss cannon would I build two drones here? Two gauss cannons does look better. Or one gauss cannon looks better than two drones. Hmm. But also green is pretty great. And I Rather, I'd kind of like to save the green, honestly. I might just build engines if I had done this, but I don't need engines. I have this stuff. I think I'll take the drones. This is a big tempo turn for me, and I'd like to keep it. I have 22 income, and my opponent also has 22 income, still, despite all these vengeances. I have a bigger mass of sentinels, which are sort of producing, like, quote, income in the form of, uh, engineers. Is he losing any attack here? No. This force field was to keep alive the both the, uh, the Xeno and the Rhino. That's good. I could have walled instead, but I like switching to a grid at this point. I think. Just to preserve wall supply, honestly. It's going to be an issue soon. I love this. Look at these six grayed out drones. Beautiful. Here he still loses no attack, but this defends the Xeno. And I can keep Rhinoing. Seems good. This is what I feel like you should have been doing with all that green a while ago. Does my opponent lose any attack here? Still no. I mean, he's <laughs> he's hanging on for sure-sies. Um, I don't really relish the idea of building the last wall. But I also don't like... I guess this is just the time to lose the Xeno, I guess is the, uh, the thing now. Right, I can lose this Xeno, it's fine, that's what he's for. To let me save on wall supply and keep the grids going. and not have to force field so much. My opponent's attacking for 23, and I'm attacking for 17, which is a little worrying, but I have seven more income than him? Okay. Now 10 more? And I have more sentinels, right? He kind of had to give up on those. We're losing a Xeno, that was the plan. It's 
probably too late for these sentinels, isn't it? Just build two rhinos. Opponents out of walls also. I guess I could have clicked this for free. Uh, no, I, I, I spent it all on rhinos, yeah. I probably can't click this, honestly. Um... Getting this last Xeno is a bit weird. But it's kind of like an infusion grid that spends both of my blue and also gets one extra attack this turn. This next turn, rather. So that seems worthwhile, I think. I'll probably just soak with it next turn, but in the meantime it did one more attack. I probably should have clicked this ad to do something productive, although I'm not sure what. I want to engineer, maybe. Did he? Oh, he has no green. That's why he couldn't buy the Xeno instead. Okay, he has to hold an attacker back to prevent a breach. He can't buy walls and he can't buy force fields. And rhinos won't cut it. Does he have any left? Yes, he has some rhinos left. So he has to hold back a splitter to defend. Although, I guess I'm losing two attack? He could build two rhinos, but he doesn't have the money for that. I guess that's it, huh? I don't really want to click my ebbs because I don't need it to defend and there's nothing much to buy. Uh, this way I can just force field my drones at a later time. Hang on, I don't need the force field. He's losing guaranteed one attack. So I think instead I will click the ebb to buy two NGs, which has a similar effect. Um, but it's Turning one of my gold into a green? Is that really what I want? No. I'll just keep the money. I could sell two of these to buy a grid, I guess. Ah, that's what I should do. Buy two grids here with by selling a drone. And then I can click this. Yeah, that looks much better. All right, we got a breach, guys. For exact, but we got it. And we're already defended, which is very pleasant news. Great. 
long game, but uh, it's kind of a fun one. What the hell? Uh, I actually stayed well below him in damage because he did this to his economy, and I was spending my money more on uh, efficient defenders for longer. So what about the replay? I think we both, like, yeah, pretty normal openings for each of us. I could have considered a conduit first, but I wanted an ebb more than I wanted some green lying around. Um, this turn is interesting. This second ebb. Uh, it could have been, for example, a splitter or a wall, something to defend. Um, this sort of commits me a little bit to building a Xeno next turn and just giving him the one Engineer. But, I mean, I don't, not a wall. It wouldn't have been a wall, obviously. A grid might have been okay. But I think... The amount of value that a grid would actually give me is, like, minuscule here. It would save me one Engineer on his Xeno turn. And then, much, much later in the game, I would soak with it. Right, and that's what it would do. Uh, whereas an ebb gave me two bucks every turn for a while, right? Pretty good. Uh, and eventually the ability to click two ebbs, which I used on rare occasions, I think. So I think it's fine to just offer the one engineer here to make your build more convenient otherwise getting a comfortable number of drones to be able to build the attackers we want. And it was also quite nice, I thought, to have these two Tarsiers lining up with just a bunch of attack that we build next turn. Um, not sure about the Xeno spam. I could have done something else, but like having this soak lying around is pretty good. Although actually I almost immediately stopped spamming Xenos and built walls instead. See, that's the thing. I often have in my mind like, oh, I'll just build Xeno every turn. And then it's like, well, but on a lot of turns, wouldn't you rather build a wall? Because it like gives you enough health to basically save the Xeno but it spends less blue, so you have your blue available for something else. Um, wait a minute, is this... Am I really using this Xeno skin? I don't like this at all. Why would I pick such a thing? All right, we gotta work on this, but okay, fine. Um, and so I often make these plans that involve like Xeno every turn, but... If you're on enough of an economy to afford it, it's often still better to build walls anyway, because then you have more blue. And if I were indeed on the, what, uh, 12, 16 drone economy that I had sort of predicted, um, then I would be perfectly comfortable to keep building Xenos and just loot, cycle Xenos, basically. Um, but since I ended up with a bunch more drones than I thought I would, right, by like 10, um, it was more convenient to build defense with one blue instead of two so that I could spend the extra money on another attacker. Uh, and so this Venge Cannon, as I th think I said in the game, seems fine. I don't know. I was thinking, like, you kind of want to spend a lot of green every turn, like about two, right? Xeno, Sentinel. Although I was, in fact, not doing that. I was just building Sentinel every turn. So maybe not. Maybe you just, like, have too much green. And you're only going to build this Xeno, like, once. And then after that, you have too much. And so building a Venge Cannon as a green sink, A, to sink the green you have now, and B, to sink the excess green you'll be building up in the future into Gauss Charges, seems, like, fine. Seems reasonable. Um, what I don't understand is sinking the Venge Cannon and then buying another conduit so you can, like, click it more or build more Venges. Right, this is a very... The reason we got all these drones is because drones are good in this game, and there's a ton of soak, right? These three units here are all, like, a bunch of soak. Um, Ebb Turbine is Econ, and... So, I don't understand 
choosing to throw away the econ for venges. One venge, as I said, fine. More venges I don't get. This was actually also was quite interesting too. He, I, I didn't like. I remarked upon it in the game. I don't know if it was right, but should it have been like uh, DD two? Because he um, he floated an energy, and an ebb turbine is basically transmuting blue into energy, sort of. He spent 12 bucks on four drones, uh, which you can't do because you only have three energy. But you could buy two drones in one ebb and have the same net effect. The only reason you would choose to do it this way is if you anticipate future triple-click ebb turns, um, which certainly like are a thing you could do, and in the end he was doing it. But I feel like his actual like supply of real drones was a more pressing concern, um, being able to force field um, mm, click ebbs more times instead of more all at once. And if one of these ebbs had been two drones instead, I feel like he would have been happier. It floats the blue, which you're conditioned to feel bad about, um, and you're typically tr conditioned to feel like not too concerned about floating energy except in the early game. Um, because like once you're done droning, who needs energy? But here he actually is droning, and so he has this energy sitting here that he's not making use of, which is like pretty good. Is it as good as a blue? Not really, but since the thing you can buy with it is better than what you could buy with a blue, I think, arguably, uh, it would have been better to just get two drones here. But okay, let's move on. Uh, and then I transitioned into just like buying the stuff I wanted, and it was pretty cool to have the Tarsiers arriving at the same time as I built these fast attackers. And is this when I stopped building Tarsiers, number five? Yeah, that was enough, and then I said Rhino time. I think that's about right. Especially with my opponent building Venges. The, we're gonna come to the end game within the next few turns and having Soak available is gonna be quite nice. Or not, not the end game exactly, but a point in the game where soaking for two is better than a Tarsier. Like where, where, that's interesting. Are there units like that, that you can sell to gain defense, anything like a Tarsier, but that you can click it and it becomes a defender? I mean, I guess Steel Splitter, right, is, is, an, is an example. Steel Splitter is a Tarsier, which, if you feel like, you can stop clicking and it turns into a defender. Interesting. I was trying to think of... Um, building Rhino here as, like, a fast Tarsier that you can sell to become a force field or something, right? That you're forced to sell two turns from now and make into a force field. And I was trying to think, are there units like that, like Tarsier, that you actually can click whenever you want to transform them? And the answer is, I can't think of any. But there's Steel Splitter and Urban Sentry, which you can do the opposite. You can stop clicking and turn them into defenses. Borehole, I guess, would be the closest comparison to Rhino here. Except it's a borehole you must sacrifice two turns from now. So clearly worse than borehole, but comparable. Interesting. And... Yeah, just trying to defend all my attackers. Although actually, I at this point... I'm losing a rhino on defense here? I'm not sure why I decided that was a good idea. Could I not have force fielded to prevent that somehow? I don't remember. I must have discussed it, because it seems like I'm obviously losing this Rhino. Was it, like, preserving wall supply? I don't know. Oh, let's go back, actually, and look at that Sentinel hold play that I made. Did it work out? Like, it got the, uh, the extra damage I wanted, right? He did this. Um, and how bad was it to not have that extra Engineer quite so soon? It meant I lost this Rhino, for starters. Um, so maybe actually it already uh, cost me. Right, I, I gained one total damage against him, but in exchange I had to lose this Rhino instead of Engineers. And 
the Rhino could have done some damage. But, I don't know, this bought me more tempo, because I had, like, a little bit more defense lying around. It's unclear. I never know when to hold these kinds of, these attackers that, like, also do something else. Um, you know, Sentinel, I guess, being the primary example. Um, uh, Zamora being the most extreme example. If you have a huge exploit where you can hold back 8 attack, and it's somehow useful to keep all of the green, like you can hold some more. It happens on rare occasions. Um, but usually not, because the 8 gold is pretty important. But if you have, like, very few conduits and you get to click Zamora rarely, there might be a spot where, like, the click is just not doing much on a particular turn, and so you save it for next turn. Anyway, I never know what, uh, what to do in such situations. Here, I got an exploit against his attack, but... It cost me defensive tempo, so not sure. And at this point, with my opponent like triple clicking ebbs and triple force fielding, it just feels like things are declining too quickly for him. Whereas I'm trying to keep cool stretch out my wall supply by building some grids and keep my drones alive. But I'm having to defend a lot more attack than he is because of these vengeance. So, meh. It was cool to win. I'm glad I managed my defenses pretty well, it seemed, in the end game. Um, and I could have survived for a couple more turns, I think even if I hadn't been able to breach him. Not many more turns, I guess. I'm probably just, like, ebbing both of my drones here, t two drones here to build, uh... Oh, I'm over I've already built the Xeno. That's nice. Um... Ebb one drone to build three NGs or something. I think I was actually thinking of unbuying the Xeno... Clicking ebb and getting two more grids. Yeah, that's what I was going to do next. Um, and then I can, like, fall back to holding a steel splitter gradually. Uh, yeah, a couple more turns of this kind of onslaught would be fine. So I guess I was way ahead. So there, even though it was a bit hard to survive. <laughs> All right, well, that was a much, uh, much longer game than the first one. And uh, we are well over our time budget for the episode. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.